Hello and yajo everyone! In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to make sesame balls. And sesame balls is a very popular uh, Vietnamese dessert or appetizer as well as a Chinese dessert or appetizer as well. And within the Hmong community, we also love eating sesame balls, especially making it for special occasions. So today I'll show you guys the basic Hmong Bing filling sesame balls. Um, you guys can definitely make a savory version of this as well, but I'll just show you guys the most common flavor of sesame balls balls besides the sweetened red bean filling and hopefully you guys can be able to make it um, and yes there are a lot of recipes out there uh, but hopefully if you guys have found your recipe if not I hope this recipe works out for you so let's go ahead and start making some sesame balls let's go it's gonna be so good oh my gosh let's go Okay, so the first thing we want to take care of is the mung bean filling. We're going to do this first because we want it to cool so that we can actually form it into little balls. Um, so here I have about a cup of mung bean that I've soaked overnight in water and it kind of doubled in size so you guys can see here. It soaks up pretty well with the water. Um, I do it this way because it's a lot faster to actually cook it. So yeah, I soaked this in water overnight and then drained it and then rinsed it a few times and this is what you get. So what I'm going to do now is transfer this into a pot because we are going to actually boil it and cook it down. So I'm going to put this into a pot. And then I'm going to go ahead and add about a cup of water, not too much. And then we are going to cook this until the mung bean is nice and soft. Just make sure that when you are cooking this, uh, go ahead and make sure you stir it so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And also make sure that the uh, actual starch doesn't ride and overproof the actual pot. So I'm going to go ahead and cook this for a good 15 minutes and we'll see how it looks like. Okay, so I've been cooking this for a good eight minutes or so and I've been stirring it, kind of smashing it as well. And I've added a little bit of water just so that it didn't stick to the bottom because it will. So at this point, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and add in some sugar. And what happens when you add in the sugar is it's going to draw out a lot of the moisture as well. So we're going to cook this with the sugar as well until all the mung bean is fully cooked on the inside, which is getting pretty close. A little bit of salt in there as well. Just to season that. It looks pretty good. It's getting pretty thick. Make sure you don't put this on high heat or else you're going to tend to burn the bottom. Okay, this is pretty good. The mummy is cooked all the way through. Still a little bit chunky the way I like it. So, for example, I'm going to show you guys. This should be easy to smash through. That means it's fully cooked. Um, I like it chunky, so this is pretty good. At this point, the more it sits and it cools down, the more it will firm up. So just make sure you guys have the, the consistency that you like. So see, it's a little chunky still. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and add in some grated coconut here. I have some freshly grated coconut that I'm going to add. This is also for great texture and gives it the really good coconut flavor taste to it. Stir that in. So this is basically it for the filling. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this into a plate, put some plastic wrap on it, and we're going to cool it in the fridge um, until we're ready to use it and form it into little balls. I'm going to do that now. All right, I'm gonna transfer this onto a plate here. That way it cools down a lot faster. I'm gonna flatten this and I'm gonna put a plastic wrap on top of it so it doesn't form a skin when it cools down. You guys can also put this into a food processor to make it even smoother. Um, so if you guys are the smooth texture, go ahead and do that. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put plastic wrap on top of it and we're gonna put this in the refrigerator until it is completely cool to use and form into little balls. So the filling has cooled down. It is good to actually form it into little balls. So what I'm gonna do is about like half a tablespoon. Just form it into little balls like this. You guys can definitely make this filling a day before, let it cool and you can form it the next day or you can do it all in one day and use it the next morning. Um, but I'm only doing like a half of a tablespoon size ball and yeah, we'll put this on another plate and have those be ready. If you guys have a cookie scooper, 
like a small cookie scoop, definitely use that too. It might be a lot easier. Just keep doing that until all of the filling is used up. All right, so I finished rolling out the mung beans into little balls. I made about, 30, I think, 32 little balls here. So we are going to go ahead and set this aside, and we can start doing our dry greens and making the actual dough. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we can go ahead and start doing the dough. So in the bowl here, what I'm going to add is some potato flakes. Um, a lot of recipe calls for potato flakes, and yes, it does work. And what potato flakes does is because it is a starch, it helps tenderizes the dough. If you guys don't have potato flakes, definitely just put half a cup of cooked mashed potatoes in there. But we're going to do half a cup of dried potato flakes into the bowl. And then to that, we're going to add in half a cup um, of, of hot boiling water just to soak up and cook up the potatoes. Mix that really well. That brings it back to potato life. <laughs> All right, so now we could go ahead and add in some sugar. I'm gonna add in about three fourths cup of sugar. Um, I'm only doing that much because I don't like sesame balls to be too sweet because of the filling. And I'm gonna add in some salt as well, about a teaspoon. And I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, two cups of warm water. The reason why I added half a cup of hot water is just to plump the potato starches in there. And then now I'm going to add in two more cups of warm water. It doesn't have to be boiling water. Mix this really well. Okay, that's good. Okay, right, so dry ingredients. Here I have about a cup of rice flour that I'm going to add into the liquid. And then I have about a tablespoon of baking powder. I'm going to add that in there as well. And then the last ingredients is the glutinous rice flour here. Um, I'm going to add the whole bag. So this is a 16 ounce bag. I'm going to add the whole bag in there. Dump all of that whole bag in there. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to use my hands with some gloves on and mix this with my hands just because I find it a lot easier to work with any kind of glutinous starch. Okay, I'm going to switch to my actual hands now. Yeah. Nice. So you want to mix this until everything is nicely incorporated in there. You get a nice dough, nice workable dough. The beauty of this is that it is gluten free, so you don't have to overwork this to make a tough dough, which is nice because most of what else, because all the stuff we have in here is basically starch, so we're good to go with that. All right, so this feels pretty good. Nicely hydrated, feels kind of like Play Doh. <laughs> all right. So at this point, what I can tell is I'll take a piece of this and just roll it out. And when I roll it, I have I know if it's a good hydrated dough is when I don't see any cracks. So you can see no cracks when you flatten it, no cracks on the outside. That means it's good. So the dough is good to go. I'm going to separate this into 32 evenly portions. And then we can start putting the filling in, roll it in sesame seeds, and start frying pretty easy. All right, I'm going to put the dough on my surface here and I'm just going to go ahead and roll this out so that I can make even portions of balls. If you guys have a scale, definitely use a scale and use this to portion it out, but I'm not going to bother. I just need 32 equal portions of this. So I'm just going to divide this in half. Make this even evenly, and then divide this in half again. Same thing. Okay, so that we need about eight cuts for each of these individual cuts. So I'm going to divide that in half, and divide that with another half here. 
and just split those in half because we have 32 balls and if you guys can't eyeball it, it is totally fine because, you know, sesame balls, if you're making it at home, it doesn't really matter. Um, people won't complain how uneven it is, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to divide these into um, 32 equal pieces and then we can start rolling it out. And that's pretty much it. So with each piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one dough and you're going to go ahead and roll this into a ball. And if you're not going to use this dough, definitely cover it up with um, saran wrap so it doesn't dry out. But I'm going to need to go ahead and roll out all of these into balls so that I have easier access to put the filling in. So just keep doing this until all the dough is rolled up into little balls and then we can put the filling in. It's just really tedious work because it's a lot of repetitive and you know. Okay, so I finished rolling out all of these. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take one ball. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out really flat. Not really flat, but I'm just doing it on my palm of my hands because it's pretty pliable dough. It stretches out pretty nice. So I'm gonna do it that big about around the palm of my hand here. And then I'm going to go ahead and take one of your filling here, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and all you're going to do is take your hands and seal it as much as you can. And it does a pretty good job at closing it up. Just make sure you don't have any air pockets. If you do, it might be a little bit harder to roll it into a ball. And then you're just going to use your palm of your hand to smooth out the outer part of the dough and make sure that the filling is nice and compact in there. But yeah, there's that. Pretty nice. And all you're gonna do now is drop it into the bowl of sesame seeds here. So I have about a cup of sesame seeds here, not roasted, they're nice and raw. Go ahead and drop that in there. And you're just going to coat this up like that. And make sure you kind of like press on the seeds onto the dough so that it, when you fry it, it doesn't become loose. Yeah, so yeah, when you press that down, it should look like this. Nice sesame ball. And yeah, we'll put it on a plate for it to be ready to fry. But yeah, you're just gonna roll out the seeds onto there so it's nice and pressed onto the dough and you don't have any loose seeds. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna set this in a plate and then we'll be ready to fry. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all of these up and then uh, we can start frying it up pretty easy. Okay, so I have some oil in a pan here um, heating up. You want it about medium heat, not high at all. You want the sesame balls to slowly cook in the oil. So roughly around 325 um, and then we'll adjust the heat as we put the sesame balls in. But you don't want the oil hot. You just want it nice enough to warm up the sesame balls. So it's at temperature right now. If you guys are scared, you don't really know. I like to drop like a seed in there. If it floats up to the top and has a little bit of bubble to it, that means it's good. So let's go ahead and drop these in. As you can see, it's not sizzling right away. It has a few air bubbles popping up. That means it's good. The oil's not too hot. Because if it's too hot, you're going to burn the uh, sesame balls. And it's not going to be all the way cooked through in the middle. So that's what tends to happen if your oil's a little too hot. If it's at the right temperature, it's going to cook slowly um, on the outside and also slowly in the inside, but it creates steam and allows the inside to also cook thoroughly. I'm not going to fill out too much in there because they will expand as they cook in there. So I'm going to put enough to fill the gaps in the bottom. And then since we have a lot of surface room on the top, they're all going to float to the top, which is going to be good. So that's about half of that in there. 
But yeah, at this point, the sesame balls are going to sit on the bottom. So if you have a really high temperature oil, it's going to have a burn on the bottom. So put it very low and just let that go. And it's going to come up as it goes and cooks. And yeah, we'll keep an eye on it, twist it around, and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move some of these around so they don't burn on the bottom. So you can see some of them are browning on the bottom because they're sitting on the very bottom of the pan. So just gently move these around so you get a good even cooking. You can tell some of them are floating on the top already which is good. It's probably take about like 10 or 15 minutes for the sesame balls to cook thoroughly. So just keep an eye on it. Um, if you find that your temperature is a little too low, you know, you can always adjust your temperature. But rotate these as you go. They do sometimes rotate by themselves like these which is pretty cool. Uh, they know when to rotate sometimes. <laughs> All right, it's been a good five to eight minutes of cooking this. You can see it's starting to brown a little bit, which is nice. Just keep turning it around so that it cooks evenly. You can spot some of them will turn by itself, which is kind of cool. I don't know how it does that, but uh, some of them just rotate as it goes, See, like this one, that's so cool, like this one's rotating itself, it's like its own clock in here. But they are browning pretty nice, they're almost ready actually, it might take about like 3 or 4 more minutes um, until they're nicely golden brown and uh, ready to take it off the heat. Okay, these are nice and golden, some of the bottoms aren't as brown but they're fully cooked almost pretty much but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take these out of the oil I like mine pretty golden I know a lot of people fry it just to a light golden color but I like mine pretty golden just because I like that crisp texture in there but yeah at this point they're pretty much done yummy, yummy. okay I'm gonna go ahead and take these off the heat and then we are going to go ahead and stick them in the strainer Now we are just going to continue finish cooking these up and then uh, we are good to go. It's pretty simple. Um, let, them, let them cool before you go ahead and eat one of them because it is hot in the center. So yeah, we're going to finish these off and then uh, we can snack on them. It's so exciting. Yee there we go. This is the fried sesame balls that we finished up frying. Let it cool and then people can just go in and snack on it. It's super, super simple. Um, and beautiful too. Look at this. But yeah, I'll show you the inside of it. So yeah, this is what it looks like in the inside. Pretty hollow in there. Has a good space in there. Um, the dough is nice and crispy. And the filling in here sesame balls are good day of if you guys have an air fryer definitely utilize that the next day if you guys have a lot of leftover left but they are best a day of consuming oh so good